So, uh, and of course, when you talk about Henri Premier, it says, you know, if anybody knows anything about history, IT's history, Henri Premier built over 300 castles. He built the citadel that can house over 20,000 people, the largest structure built in the Americas, uh, totally autonomous. 20,000 people inside will have all the water, the food, everything they need, and can withstand a uh, siege for over a year. Um, so as we look at the work of Henri, he built more schools than most people who stayed over 20 years. You know, He built hospitals, he established laws and structures. Um, in parenthesis, the law about social security, what is today called in the United States social security, this was invented by Henry I in IT. And when he established a law that says that if you work for somebody for over 20 years and you became damaged and could no longer work or you become sick, then the employer had a duty, was duty bound to give you the means to survive until your death. Every newspaper screamed and yelled, every government said, this man is doing a new type of slavery. He is now putting employers into slavery. Of course, while they are they're t talking down about the law, they're copying it and establishing it in their own country. And which is why uh, what the, the US, after translating the work, called it the Social Security Act. But this was created in IT. Uh, Ali is also the first man to say, uh, any woman who is delivering a baby in the country if you have a baby and there is no father, the state is the father of your child. If a man has a baby and the mother is no longer, then the state is the mother of that child. He established a law um, forcing everyone to go to school. All children have to go to school. If when he was traveling, he met a child in the street during school time, he would take you, take you home and tell your parents, if we find this child in the street at the school time again, you will lose this child. The state will take the child. So you must send your children to school. You, this is a man who had a fantastic educational program, established here the School of Astronomy, the School of Mathematics, the School of Music, the School of Language, university level we're talking about. Okay. This is a man that anything that uh, there's one uh, Example, one anecdote. Someone, uh, the, a princess of in England, sent to King Henry a a carrot and and made of uh, silver, beautifully worked. And uh, when King Henry saw it, he sent for his guys who used to do his carrots and asked them who could do exactly the same thing. And three of them said that they could. He gave them all the material. They did it, and at the end, he took the best one and sent it back to the princess in England. The princess sent him a note saying, I thought you were a gentleman. I sent you a gift and you sent it back to me. He said, no, take the time to look on the left side of this and you will know where it was fabricated. It was made in Haiti but it was so perfectly made that the princess couldn't even see it wasn't what she sent. So this is the kind of pride this man worked with and uh, you know, a great constructor. So of course when the uh, old man says that he wrote the independence in stones, he left more monuments for us than all other presidents and kings and everybody put together. So his perception of history was absolutely correct. So as we meet with the elders and learn from them, they allow us to have a better view and to look at history from our own perspective. Even with very simple things like uh, what French people would call petite histoire, that's not history, that's petite histoire. But it's important, for example, uh, all the founders the founders established that each had to be, uh, when you have, um, when Dessaline is getting married, Toussaint 
accompanies him, the, Toussaint's wife represents Dessaline's mother, and Toussaint himself represents the father of the wife of Dessaline. Uh, when Christophe has a baby, Dessaline baptized the baby, he's the godfather of this child. So the founders, when we get into their lives, we see how much they made a close-knit family thing. They rebuilt the family, which was destroyed by slavery. So they showed us the importance of, of family ties. So that's why it is important for us, as we learn history, that we don't do it the way Europeans take history. Well, the general came, the general did this, and he shoot that, and he won this battle, and he lost this battle. No, we want to know this general. Who's his mama? Who raised him? What were the perceptions? What kind of education did he receive? How does he view the collective? What is his relationship to the collective? Because one who has no set, established, firm relationship with the collective is not qualified to lead a country. Uh -huh. Now, you've explained, I've given us examples of some of your experience or process towards how you have acquired some of the information that <clears throat> has been passed to you. Rio, elders, what are you doing with this information? How are you using this information or passing it on? We record it in every form that we can. We put it on tapes, we have reports, we put it on paper, we write. We have a manuscript of uh, 1,200, more than 1,200 pages on IT's history. Uh, of course, it's not the traditional version, the accepted, the version that was given to us by the colonizers and the losers. Because as you know, history is always written by the winners. But in our case, this thing that they give us as history is written by the losers. Because you beat the French in 1824, and then the French comes back with the church and a concorda where IET's government sign that they give the monopoly of instruction, of public instruction to the church, which in fact meant the government had no right to set up any schools. Only the church could set up schools for us, of course. And that's what we came to understand is that in fact, after having lost the war, the French came back with a new war. The war, the mental war, to capture our children's mind, to, to make them forget the greatness of their fathers, their power, their ability to take on whatever the world could put in front of them. Because the reality of our history is, and it's not written in the books, but the reality is what? IT militarily beat the Spanish army, the French army, the English army, the German army. And in fact, the forces that Napoleon sent here is an imperial force made out of Swiss, of, of, of Polish, of Czechoslovakian. All the countries that France occupied at the time in Europe, all of them had to give men to come and crush the revolution here. But what happened is that we beat them all. Those who were not beaten militarily were just convinced to join us and become part of our own force. Like the Polish, they joined the black forces. Some of the Swiss joined the black forces. So in Dessaline's army, he had all kinds of Africans and Europeans and everybody else that was on, on the territory here. So having won this fabulous battle, uh, the British lost 25,000 men here. Their, lo their largest loss 
throughout the Americas, nowhere else did they lose. 